I'm so, I, I'm, I'm so sorry to everybody, but we have a really cooperative and very nice security team who are insistent that we must be out of this room by nine o'clock. So unfortunately, I just cannot take any more people. And the unenviable task is left to me to wrap up the proceedings at a time when I think we're really only getting going. And why wouldn't we be getting going when we've been tonight in the presence of such absolutely unbelievably powerful speakers? I mean, I think I speak for all of us that we have been part of something very special here tonight. It's been a difficult meeting, but it's been such an important one because what we've done is put on trial Israeli genocide here in the heart of the beast that has been complicit in it because the question was asked how has it continued and I think it's been answered by Francesca and others. It has continued only because of the enablement of the US and the EU and the white supremacist countries, the old colonial powers. That has got us to the situation that we are in today. But I think by us being here us who are involved in these institutions, it in and of itself is a powerful statement of how things are changing. I think we're all emerging from this meeting with a much greater understanding of how we got to this point and how we can change it. Because as the speakers have said, the genocide that we see wasn't accidental. It didn't happen on October the 7th. It was rooted in the settler colonial project that began with the Nakba, but emboldened by the persistent violations of international law by Israel with impunity. That's why we are where we are today. That's why we have a crisis on a global scale. And the crisis in Gaza is absolutely a crisis of humanity, and a crisis of international law. That's what we're trying to salvage. International law isn't great. It has plenty of flaws, but it is the best that we have. And I think our expert speakers have put it up to us to what we need to do in defense of international law. It needs Europe, it needs to change course. It needs to get out from under the apron of the US. It needs to start exercising an independent foreign policy based on the upholding of international law. It is that simple. So, look, we've had... <laughs> an incredibly important event. It's been really constructive and it's had brought us huge clarity. Everybody who hasn't read Francesca's report, please read it. It's absolute dynamite. Devastating that it had to be written. Devastating that behind all the statistics is a human being who's suffering as we speak. It's kind of mad that in Ireland there are actually psychologists providing treatment for people in Ireland to deal with the trauma and they're just watching the situations on their phone, how much trauma is going to be carried for generations as a result of what's going on. But we've got greater clarity here tonight. I think I'd make a special point to the staff members who are here, because it's not been easy for staff in these institutions. I think all of us feel a sort of a, a collective guilt uh, an embarrassment that maybe the organisations that many of you thought you joined with a, a desire of doing good and advancing the cause of humanity and you found your employers complicit in a genocide, that's a hard burden for staff to take and I really hope out of this event that you realise you are not alone. And it's not the politicians who change things. I'm really glad for my MEQP colleagues who are here and from us at the top table for hosting this to all of you who've come. Politicians don't change things. It's the people who change things. And we saw that with apartheid South Africa. It was people power that delivered an end to that. And how fitting that 30 years on after the ending of apartheid, it was South Africa and South Africa alone that went into The Hague. If that isn't a lesson for how humanity can move forward, I don't know what is, because it's about mobilising and capitalising on the power that's there with everybody. Everybody here can do something to advance the cause. Talk to your friends tomorrow about what you heard. Get involved in the BDS movement. Speak up at work. There's loads more people who think the way you do. The lid isn't going back on this. 
the Zionist project is over because, as Mick said earlier, it's lost the backing of a majority of the Jewish population globally and the world can see it for what it is. So we have to use that now to go forward and build a better system, justice and accountability and self-determination for Gaza and Palestine. And if you ever feel uh, that your efforts are flawed or that you're not listening, well then take inspiration from the courage of Francesca, of Diana and of I've been at many meetings here, but the powerful contributions from these wonderful people is the way forward. So we'll bring them all in our hearts, go forward, long live Palestine, long live Gaza. Thank you all so much.